there is not a lot of research done on medical intuition. In fact, when I went to look and research for the book, I, I found maybe a handful of studies. Right. There, there have been, you know, over the years, there have been a lot of anecdotal stories. I mean, thousands of those, but not a lot of hard data and all of it, you know, pretty much inconclusive uh, or promising, which is a really good thing. We want to see promising, you know, information. I, I, when I looked at that some years ago, I thought, you know, my graduates of my program are nailing it. You know, we're getting, they, they fill out case reports. We do a lot of practicum hours and we see that anecdotally, you know, we're hitting our marks. So what does that mean? Can we, can we quantify this? And so this little study was designed to just see what we could see. And what we found was, um, I'll give you a little background on it since I know you like the research. Our, the, there were five medical intuitive graduates of the program. There were 67 practice cl uh, clients, actually participants from the community. Some of them were actually from UCSD Medical Center. Now, we didn't have access to their medical records, which is, you know, what we want to continue forward with research on. <laughs> but uh, we we did the the study in the most blinded way we could. In other words, we don't do a health intake. We don't know what anybody comes in with. The medical intuitives have their eyes closed, you know, so we don't have, you know, visual cues or anything like that. What we found was uh, that the participants rated the medical intuitives as 94% accurate in the evaluation uh, and um, location of their primary health issue. That's and that amazing. That's a fabulous number. Uh, the doctors look at that and say, we don't even get that. <laughs> you know? uh, we also had a 98% accuracy in the uh, description of life history that uh, could correlate with uh, the health issue. And that's really phenomenal because we want to know not just what's going on in the body, but why is, why is it going on in the body? Is there anything in history that could have led to this? And we can we can talk about that even more in depth, if you like. Um, we also had a really fabulous stat uh, piece of data. We asked the participants how many had a known medical diagnosis, how many had heard from their doctor, this is what you have. And of that group, which was about half of them, uh, how consistent was the medical intuitive in describing, you know, in correlating that diagnosis, in other words, describing it in such a way that they recognize the diagnosis, right? How consistent were they? And we got a 94% consistency. That's with amazing. That. Yeah, there were a lot of other stats in there that I wrote about in the book that were just as wonderful and exciting. And uh, all of this ha uh, led us to uh, having it be published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, which is a peer-reviewed medical journal. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and we're very proud of that because that represents the first known published data on medical intuition in, in about 20, 20 to 25 years, you know, just there it is. So we're going to build on that. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, I mean, that I wanted you to share that because I was astounded when I read those stats myself. That's beyond what I would have expected to see. Um, so this audience is super savvy. Um, people understand they've heard of medical intuition. Some people do it themselves uh, privately or a, even as a profession. Um, and one of the things I'd like from you, because you also train people, so you see a lot of what's going on, even with your own clients, is what you're seeing now, because the world has shifted so dramatically over the last two to three years um, with both COVID, whether we, we have Receive whether we've been exposed to it naturally or have vaccines, we've got this little spike protein roaming around in the body and doing all sorts of things that seem to be really almost incalculable in the number of types of symptoms people have ended up with afterward, but also the isolation and depression, um, the uh, kind of angst, even splitting apart of families and such that have occurred. What are you seeing now in terms of the what kinds of new conditions or more common conditions are you seeing than you saw before all of this? Oh my goodness. Um, respiratory and gut health are the two main things, but also nervous system, um, endocrine, I mean, you know, <laughs> 
it, it kind of, when you start to look at the body this way, you see the interactions and the connections. And so, you know, it's not that, you know, people are just having fatigue and long-term COVID, they call it, you know, with a myriad of issues, cardiovascular issues and on and on and on. But also the connections that the body makes that medical intuitives are trained to see. That's the difference between conventional medicine or even established complementary practices or alternative practices because everybody's looking through their own lens. Right. And when you look through your own lens, you're going to miss the bigger picture. Medical intuition is designed to look at that 360, you know, this this system is connected to that system is connected to the other. And that's what makes it so valuable in terms of how to help people with these issues that are pretty rampant right now. I can tell you that most people that come through my practice have some kind of digestive issue going on. That's interesting. Now, that's not what you'd throw into the normal um, kind of top four symptoms of COVID, but I've been hearing this from a lot of people. I myself have had these issues. What's going on? Why digestive issues after all of this? Well, I think digestive issues has been going on forever. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's just now. I, I do believe that, you know, stress is a big part of it. We live in an incredibly stressful time and it's just doesn't seem to be letting up. And that is a, you know, if you relate it to the chakra system, that's a third chakra issue, a second chakra issue, emotions and self-expression. There's a lot of fear. Um, and so when we talk about this, there's really no one way to say, well, it's got to be this yeah. or it's got to be that because everybody's body assimilates things differently. Everybody's mind and spirit assimilates things differently. Right. But you just said a lot of it right there. Um, the preponderance of fear and anxiety and emotions tied into the third chakra. There you are. Um, and so it seems that each person is being affected perhaps slightly differently, but that is ubiquitous. Those feelings have been ubiquitous globally, right? Well, you add in, you know, climate issues and, you know, financial. I mean, the whole thing, we are mm -hmm. living in interesting times, yes. Regina. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, you know, that really speaks to the fact that we have an obligation. We, if you think about it that way, we have an opportunity. Let's say, let's, let's, let's frame it that way to develop, um, a really powerful mind-body connection, intuitive mind-body connection. Everybody talks about that, but I got to ask, you know, well, what does that mean to you? <laughs> that means that, you know, if I'm tired, I go take a nap. Well, that's good. Well, how about what your, what your small intestine wants to tell you? You know, what about what your liver has to say, you know, having to do with toxicity levels? How right. about you know, what your shoulder wants you to know, you know, etc. So there's a lot of ways to approach this that use the intuitive mind-body connection that can be very, very helpful uh, for people just to mitigate stress, just to understand what's happening. Right. Uh, that understanding is it speaks volumes. Um, one of my favorite quotes I'll throw in here is by Dr. Dean Ornish. And his quote is, awareness is the first step in healing. I love that. That is the so motto. simple and so true. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you might also want to consider joining Patreon, which allows me to keep all of this content free and available to everyone. And if you're looking for like-minded souls, you might also enjoy my online community called Our Neighborhood. Links to join are in the description.